Hey, howdy, and a big welcome back to Yak City Gaming right here on Clemhawks. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Yak, and we are ready to rip with a career simulation for the first time in MLB The Show 22 this year. And I'm looking forward to doing MLB's number one prospect, Bobby Witt Jr. Yes, sir, you saw in the title, everybody's nicknamed this guy, the next Mike Trout at 21 years old. MLB The Show 22's got him slotted into the nine hole in the Kansas City Royals lineup, so we get to sit there and, right, we don't have to monkey around with the rosters, didn't do anything. This is exactly how I loaded in MLB The Show 22's franchise mode to get this career simulation underway. So without wasting any more time, of course, the season's a little different. It would have started on March 31st for the Royals against the Cleveland Guardians. However, we now sit here and we've got this situation to figure out, right? I've got everything on auto. We're going to test this, see how this goes, and we're just going to simply sim through date and we'll go uh, about by the all-star break. We'll turn off critical situations. Nice of it to ask, but we don't need to worry about that too too much at all as you see these Kansas City Royals this season if this any indication for what you're about to see come April 8th or 9th depending on what the real Royals schedule looks like it is not going to be a good year until all of a sudden look at that they start winning get going 21 well all right suddenly through May almost there got it done and got it going so we'll simulate the draft we'll just keep it going everything will just kind of build up as we go along and see what happens so you see right here, we've traded David Fletcher to the Royals for Whip Merrifield. Right, there you go, Merrifield's out. David Fletcher in for the Royals, already the first big trade. And like I said, everything's on auto. We're just going out there, just seeing how Bobby Witt Jr. does, A, in his rookie season, but B, in his career as the simulation gets underway in earnest as we're already through June 2022, and we are just barely two minutes in. So Michael Taylor... Goes uh, goes to the Cubs for Caleb Killian. I guess I should really stop wasting time with trades. It doesn't really matter until we get where we're going. Um, skip, as I guess I should have also said uh, that we don't want to be seeing that kind of stuff as we get into the All-Star break here. Today is the All-Star Futures game. A couple of players are on the All-Star teams. Don't need to worry about that. Today is the essential thing, and we will just... You know what, we better check the home run derby, see who's all in there. Uh, right now, the Royals currently don't have anyone in the home run derby, so we don't need to waste any time going there. Let's sim season, and let's see. Today, one all-star has made it. We'll stop for the all-star break. Just kidding. We will just carry on and keep going as the AL defeats the NL, and that is about it. This is going to be the most tedious part of every single, um, every single career simulation we do is just as we get going here it kind of takes up some time yon diaz and Cal Manzardo, i really got to stop pointing that out sorry you can tell it's the first one right we'll figure this all out and we'll see what my editing guy here on clem hawks gets going for us as these career simulations keep going throughout the year the royals currently sitting through august almost 57 and 72 so not quite a fully successful season for the rookie in bobby witt jr as we will we should have stopped at the All-Star break and taken a look at his stats, but we'll go after year one, the rookie season for Bobby Witt Jr., waiting to see if he wins Rookie of the Year, as we are currently having a couple of teams out of the running there early on in the season. And that will do it, a 481 win percentage for Kansas City Royals. Not quite the year you wish you would have had, but at the same rate, it just is what it is. Skip remaining notifications. And now down to Bobby Witt Jr. here on the MLB roster. See where he kind of finished up at 75 overall for the year. So he was up from that 72 that he started at. Look at those nice stats coming in. 56, 57 contact now. Power went up. 10 home runs, 38 RBIs, and 147 games played, 7 stolen bases, 41 base on balls, an average of 231, 32 doubles. So the guy was effective. I mean, you look at that OPS, it's going to be, or yeah, that OPS should be higher, although only batting 231, it's really not. I guess slugging is what I'm getting at. But 119 hits, 32 second base hits, 6 three bags, and 10 homers. Like, you're talking about 58, oh, pretty much half, half of his hits this season were extra base hits. So, Bobby Witt Jr. obviously looks very good going into the rest of his career. And again, the nice part about having everything on 
full auto is we will just kind of go through everything and just click through it and we'll see what happens as we move along here so now into the exclusive period this is all kind of my first tester for everything here in franchise mode so we'll see how this all goes as we'll get through this a couple of times over I'm sure in a career simulation unless Bobby Witt Jr. somehow ends up tragically injured in like 2024 and that's it that's all for him there simulate rule 5 draft and we should be getting into things here pretty quick as we're rolling through the off season now and right away we go Aaron Nola went somewhere to the Reds Joey Gallo to the Tigers and now we're into spring training sim the spring and away we go right now we get into Bobby Wood Jr's second year here only five minutes 50 seconds into the video not bad I guess we'll probably end up chopping out the off-season stuff and getting right back into the second season. So here we go, right here, second season for Bobby Witt Jr., who will line up in the Royals lineup, now promoted into the eight spot, my I remind you, eight spot for Bobby Witt Jr., who sees things go up to 56 and 60 contact at age 22. The stats look even better, his speed's even better, and everything across the board Looks just that much better at 76 overall, and man, oh man, does he have a lot of growing to do at the MLB level this year. Looking to do a little bit better than last year. 10 homers, not a bad rookie season, obviously probably not rookie of the year. We'll check the awards every two to three years just to kind of give us an indication of how his career is going. But this season simming along a lot faster so far than it seemed the other season tended to early on. I think we've just had a lot less stoppages in the Sims. So now you see again the Royals just struggling to make a go of it here early on in this franchise mode with Bobby Witt Jr. still coming of age in the MLB. So that's where you kind of see things as the Yankees make a trade with us for Eric Pena Jr. it looked like. So that's interesting. And I guess we kind of have to pay attention to some of those in case we accidentally trade away Bobby Witt Jr. But we can always do the player search if he doesn't end up with us at any given point. So here we go. Going through it again as it's like Nate Lowe is coming on board to the Kansas City Royals as we get into the home run derby and the all-star break once again. And we're in again through here. Skip and skip and away we go and we'll get into the second half of the season right here as we go along. Uh, so that looks to be a pretty big trade, but that doesn't matter to us because it isn't involving us at all. And today is the trade deadline, quite a quiet trade deadline compared to what I think last year's was based on kind of how many things we had to go through. But I don't think the Royals are going to do nearly as well as they did last year with Bobby Witt Jr. as a rookie. Now this year, a sophomore in his second season in his go around here. So Oakland. Claim Gabe Spire off of waivers. Okay, good to see. And now all of a sudden I go out there and curse it and they start winning ball games. That's the way it goes when I play MLB The Show. Say one thing one way and it goes another. Uh, as again, both teams in AA and AAA don't get anywhere. And the Royals will finish 395. You got to imagine we got one heck of a draft pick coming up in the next draft as currently we go into the offseason season. And we will check Bobby Witt Jr.'s stats after that season. Now up to an 80 overall. All right, the third baseman, Witt Jr., up to an 80 overall. The stats coming across the board looking not too bad. The fielding came up huge. And 59, 65 contact. And how about this? A decent little season here. 482 at-bats, 119 hits yet again. Less doubles, more triples. Little, a couple more home runs and 60 RBIs on a very, very poor Kansas City Royals team this year. Double the stolen bases, better average this year round, better on base, better slugging, better OPS by almost 100 points. And then, of course, you look at all these stats looking just decent as well. Stolen base percentage kind of went down from last year. And a fielding percentage that increased heavily this year. That's good to see. And his war for the first time in his career was positive so right there good trends for Bobby Witt Jr. in his second season as we'll now move into the off season yet again calendar again and just keep going with this simulation as we're off and running we did that season in less than four minutes you gotta like that quite a bit 
as I'm really trying to keep this as tight together for you guys as possible here on Clem Hawks this afternoon as Bobby Witt Jr. coming in and getting this career simulation underway two seasons in. And, oh, you know what? He's already got 26 career homers, having a good go of things and really not having too bad of a start to a career on what has been a very poor Royals team to begin with. That's, I guess, what you got to kind of take a look through is this Royals team is not good at all. And here Bobby Wood Jr. finds himself trying to become kind of that Mike, -esque, Mike Trout-esque player and tragically starting it out pretty much the same way as Trout did and has lived out his entire career with the Angels. So Witt Jr. now still 30 or 23 now, 80 overall. And with that, two years of service time. So we'll see what he brings to the table here in year number three as we get it underway in 2024 as the Kansas City Royals start in the year with a winning record. They started six and five. That's the first time all simulation in the first three years that we've done that. I mean, we're down, what, 13 and 16 right now, but... That's a lot better of a record than what was last year, that 395 win percentage. So for the Royals, a better start. You know what? Like, they're trending decent. I guess you could say probably Witt Jr. being at an 80 overall is going to help out quite a bit. And, of course, growing here at 23 is going to help them substantially as this simulation now for the Royals will start picking up steam, I am sure, building a team while the computer will build a team around Bobby Witt Jr. that can potentially win something in the regular season that's the first part you got to learn to win in the regular season and they haven't done a lot of that uh, yet as it took two more years than expected for and i think i just saw a third baseman get traded hold on as no sorry Witt Jr. does not get traded. We'll take a pause to look at Witt Jr. absolutely dominating the MLB at 82 or 83 overall, may I say, is look at those stats early on in this season. I don't want to spoil too much. Let's get back to it because those stats look stellar early on here in this season, and I look forward to seeing what happens the rest of the way home for Witt Jr. in this year. So here we go. AL has defeated the NL, and away we go into... The back half of the season is Witt Jr. now fully substantially in as an MLB player in the MLB. Today is the trade deadline. That's good. Everybody stop making trades and let's get on with the simulation. Down at 50 and 67, so I think the Royals might stand a chance to win a couple more games this year. But we're going to be right around that struggling cutoff point at about 400 win percentage yet again for another year. You already see, yeah, sure, we're up to 63 wins now into the back half of September, but nothing substantial going to come from this season at all as we're going to be lucky to finish off with 70 wins if we get there, and we do not get there. 69 and 93 on the year are the Royals, but that is no small part in thanks to Bobby Witt Jr., who comes up 142 games 156 hits, 40 doubles, 3 or triples, 7 of them, 20 home runs, 76 RBIs, and a 283 batting average. And look at that. That OPS, once again, year over year over year, taking what? Just about 90-point jumps. That is absolutely incredible. I guess this year would have only been 80, but still, I guess 80-point jumps is what you're looking at so far year over year in his career and that slugging percentage coming up year over year and that on base percentage as well coming up year over year as he's now a solid 85 overall the stats are kind of all kinds of weird here as he gets his career going plus six plus 13 to the contact so his contact's not bad his power is kind of weird his vision his discipline's not really there yet and stuff is kind of just kind of lagging along here as Witt Jr. will be entering his 24-year-old season. Did anyone important retire? Guess we'll find out in the Hall of Fame. Cabrera and Scherzer, guess that makes sense as it is 2024 now. And away we go with the offseason yet again as a couple of players signing all over the place. Lots of activity early on here as we've got to just keep rolling along with it here. And that's all right. You know what? Not a bad, uh, not a bad start to this simulation, I don't think, for Bobby Witt Jr., who... Is still trying to live up to that hype of being the next Mike Trout. But look at this. Year four is going to be quite the incredible year for Bobby Witt Jr. in this simulation. I guarantee it. 
has a 20 homer season for the first time in his career in his third season. And now you get into this where it's going to be year number four in March 2025 and a good chance to get out there and really make a difference in this season for the Royals. We'll advance, check with Junior's stats, just make sure we're not missing anything. And he is going to come in at an 85 overall in the leadoff spot for the Kansas City Royals now with 78 contact versus left-handed pitchers, which... Right, look at that fielding, he's stellar, so there's a lot to him where early on he's looking good and could potentially very well turn into a great player. Although Kansas City, not a very great team, 2-10 and ten out of the gates, and now they really got to try and make up some ground here late in this month. And it looks like, well, you know what, for the most part they did a little bit better rebound, but now not really doing much here as it goes along and just seems to go from bad to worse here for Kansas City and then all of a sudden they'll pick it up that's the way this simulation's gone every time I think this season is absolutely hooped and we're going to go struggling the whole way through other than that 395 kind of win percentage in his first second year I think second year for Whit now is things are looking not too bad in Kansas City but right now could be better for sure in year number four for Bobby Witt Jr. as he tries to come out of the shell a little bit and really make some noise at the MLB level now in a full-fledged MLB career, right? He's no longer just getting his feet under him. He is a full-time MLB player playing big-time minutes in the leadoff spot for this Kansas City Royals team. Skip that, no to that, and we should be good to go as we get into, shouldn't there be some kind of trade freeze at the All-Star break, you'd think? And we're 38-63. Oh, this is not going good if you're the Kansas City Royals. And goodness sakes, good thing I shut off GM contracts. And there you go. So Bobby Witt Jr. gets traded to the Cincinnati Reds. Yes, you read that right. Bobby Witt Jr. gets traded to the Cincinnati Reds for Matthew Thompson, a 24-year-old 76 overall pitcher, and Kevin Alcantara, who's a 22-year-old, 72 overall center fielder at 88 overall. Is this, is this again, unless Kevin Alcantara's like 72 overall, A potential with 99 potential, this one does not make sense. And now we're going to have to go over to Cincinnati and see what's going on with their schedule. The rest of the way home, they're 55 or 54 and 55. And now you get the addition of Bobby Witt Jr., who's going to make a difference here for this Kansas, or Cincinnati. That's going to be confusing. Don't mind me. Cincinnati Reds roster here down the stretch trying to come in and win a title, I guess, now with the addition of Witt Jr. But it looks like for the first time in his career, Witt Jr. has a chance to finish over 500 with a ball team in the MLB. And that's exactly what's going to happen here for Bobby Witt Jr. in Cincinnati, despite finishing um do, do, do yes would i like to come to a stop 82 and 80 on the season does Witt jr with the cincinnati reds you see here he goes in there and he is in the leadoff spot 20 home runs 62 rbis and a total of 12 stolen bases a 251 average so he once again kind of scuffled down at the plate regressed a little bit in the ops section of course, you see other stuff here. The fielding percentage came down. So this was actually a pretty rough year. The war came down to the lowest it's been since that second season. So for Bobby Wood Jr., even despite having a 4.6 war last year, uh, kind of comes down, has less hits, less doubles, less triples, same amount of home runs, less RBIs. Yes, I understand he's in the leadoff position, but look at these stats. He's a much better player now continues to grow continues to be a factor here at the MLB level and somehow just has an off year and doesn't really get going especially following the trade uh, despite having 12 home runs at the pretty much time of the trade right so here we go finding ourselves advancing to the off season and view retired players nobody going to the hall of fame and away we go the calendar where we'll sim the off season and we will have to use the player search to see if Bobby Witt Jr. is still with the Reds after all is said and done this offseason. That's the only thing, right, is you've got a long ways to go in this, and he's going to bounce around a couple of times, sure, just like everybody else in this simulation. Zach Gallen signs with the 
red simulate the rule five draft away we go as we're now solidly almost 20 minutes into this and we are into year number five of wit jr's career this is going to be one heck of a long episode for you guys but hey you know what have a little bit of fun sit down relax and just kind of see it all evolve as we'll go to lineups here for cincinnati make sure we start there somewhere and it looks like Witt Jr. will once again start at the top of the lineup with four years experience for the Cincinnati Reds. Okay, came on. So that's who we have to watch on the calendar again this year. And we're going to see what happens here as the Reds go right there. Sim Spring. And away we go into another year for Bobby Witt Jr. The fifth year of his career here. And spring training has come to an end, advanced to regular season. And away we go, Sim in the season for the Reds. We're going to start off, well, kind of timid, just like the Royals tended to do in the first three and a half years of of Witt Jr.'s career. So it is what it is, as we're off to a pretty much about 500 start here. 12, 13, 14, 14 kind of deal. Just kind of winning some, losing some, and doing it all in the middle, trying to kind of fluff it all out. Once we get going here as the simulation continues, 26 and 22. So there is a potential that this could actually be the first playoffs for Bobby Witt Jr. and the first taste for the future Mike Trout of the postseason, as I'd like to see that very much. As Obviously, I'd like to deliver a good career simulation, right? At least some kind of positive news, but Kansas City did not last long for Bobby Witt Jr., sending him off to the Cincinnati Reds fairly soon when the Reds were looking for a big spark to try and get some wins down the stretch, didn't achieve it, only went 82 and 80 down the stretch, and that kind of sucks. But now you find yourself in a situation where, for the Reds, they are getting into a sub-500 territory, which really kind of sucks to see going into the All-Star break. So another situation where the Reds kind of fail to get the job done here down the stretch going into the All-Star break, similar to... Those Kansas City Royals once upon a time for Mr. Bobby Witt Jr. Now fully into year five, halfway through, and looking to come up with something to show for. Hopefully just a better rebound season if you're Witt Jr. at this point, quite honestly, because that's what you got to get back to is dominating out there in the MLB. That's number one we want to see him do. And so far, he hasn't quite brought that in MLB The Show 22 for us. As here we go, that one. Goes there and nothing happened here. Garrett Hampson goes over to the uh, Toronto Blue Jays from the Rockies. Okay. As now you've got 56 and 60 records. So the Reds have more or less pretty much crapped away another season here in franchise mode with Bobby Witt Jr. And as soon as I say that, they rally off seven wins in a row and look to maybe try and turn things around with the September reinforcements now at 76 and 70 down the stretch looking to win quite a few ball games and look at that go 83 84 and 74 and you've got four games to determine it and it looks like um i wonder if the cincinnati reds are going to make the playoffs here as we get into october at a record where they were so lineups here for cincinnati we'll go check his regular season stats for Bobby Witt Jr., who is now a 92 overall, my goodness, up at 92 overall. Fielding's incredible, durability is absolutely almost maxed out. Contact's great, power's getting better, and he still only hit 21 home runs. Still down in the hits category, tied career high in RBIs, kind of a crappy batting average, and again, the OPS slips pretty much for the third straight season in a row. That really sucks to see, and what else you see here is the fielding percentage really rebounds there, so that's massive for him, and tails off and doubles again, tails off and triples again, but a career high in home runs now, and a new total when it comes to that home run thing is a huge part for him there. So the Naturals have been eliminated, the Cincinnati Reds didn't make the postseason, so we advance on to the offseason where we will get through yet another offseason here and we're really clipping along as this franchise mode kind of tailing into now year six of Bobby Witt Jr.'s career and nothing substantial to report yet. You'd like to see it at some point bust open for him, right? A like 30 home run season or a 100 RBI season, but I don't think he's 
quite been on that team that's capable of going out there and doing that for him yet. That's kind of been the problem is he's played on the Royals who, yeah, you know what, you could say I'm controlling the Royals, but I got everything on the computer and the computer just didn't want to do anything to help a budding superstar out. And now the Reds kind of toiling in mediocrity, missing the playoffs twice after recording a huge trade to get Bobby Witt Jr., which is just kind of MLB the show trade logic, if you would pardon me, is that's just kind of what you see out of MLB the show, right? A trade that makes 100% sense. Yes, the Reds down the stretch wanted to go, and then you get into the season, and they just don't want to do anything at all, and this kind of sucks to see. So I want to see what kind of contract Bobby Witt Jr.'s on here with the Royals into your number six of his career only a 5.3 million dollar contract for 2027 so he could be headed somewhere else next season after leaving the reds and we'll see what happens now as we get in an important message to start the season and i guess sorry i'm not even looking at the right team here as suddenly yeah you know what the royals and reds both to start the season have got things figured out early on the reds though as soon as i say that start going the other way and try to turn it around a little bit here towards the back half of the month as they end up doing just that winning a bunch of games and going pretty much 22 and 11 and now all of a sudden here we go this is what we've been waiting for my friends maybe maybe just this all these w's is coming from bobby witt jr here in may because that would be beautiful to see the reds absolutely out there dominating early on in this season 47 Almost at, at the 50 win mark before they even have 20 losses. Lose all those games in a row. And that really sucks. But still a fantastic effort from the Reds here early on in this season. To get up over, well it should be 60 wins before the end of everything. Oscar Mercado goes to the Phillies for Bryson Stott and Gio Urshela. That's a brutal trade for uh, the Phillies fans back home there watching Bryson Stott go away. Who we should have a career simulation of pretty soon here coming up on Clem Hawks, may I remind you. And at this time, I would like to ask you if you'd like to join Clem Hawks and consider subscribing. That would be greatly appreciated here on the channel as now we are fully into the back half of July and the Cincinnati Reds are going to go into the trade deadline potentially with 70 wins on the board and they do it just like that. So now down the stretch, you got two months to record about another 22 wins and solidly cement yourself a playoff spot if you're the Reds. Now you got about, you need what, just over 10 in the back half of this month of September and away you would go into a playoff spot. And that is what it looks like the Cincinnati Reds will do for the first time in Bobby Witt Jr.'s career at year number six. He is going to go into the playoffs the Royals they still can't make the playoffs but it looks like it will be the New York Mets for a five game series with the Cincinnati Reds early on in this franchise mode career simulation for Bobby Witt Jr. who's now in the four spot and look at that that's what we are talking about my friends 97 overall Bobby Witt Jr. an absolute freak out there 49, two bags, eight triples, 37 home runs, and 102 RBIs. Like I said, I want to one or the other. He goes out there and gets both, kind of dials down the strikeout numbers still with that incredible stolen base percentage for a third baseman, 277 average, and that OPS over nine for the first time in his career, almost 100 points higher than his career high, which is just fantastic to see. And just to show you the fielding percentage, 990. Fan friggin tastic for Bobby Witt Jr. here, who probably still won't go out there and win MVP, but you'd like to see him do something here in these playoffs. So let's get back to the Cincinnati Reds, who are maybe on Bobby Witt Jr.'s last ride with the team, and we'll see what happens as the Naturals have been eliminated from the playoffs. And look at that, they clean sweep the Mets, so we'll go through this series and see what happens with the San Francisco Giants. They get it done in five. So it's the LA Angels in the World Series. Bobby Witt Jr., future World Series champion? Let's find out after some games in the World Series and the Angels take it all the way to game seven and defeat the Reds in the World Series. That one kind of sucks, but it is just what it is. The awards 
go out to Brandon Marsh, who is the World M World Series MVP. Postseason MVP is Bobby Witt Jr. for the National League. Yeah, you like to see that. You love to see that. That's for sure. He goes out there at 97 overall and has a complete excellent postseason. Six home runs, 16 RBIs, and a 364 batting average in the MLB. Well, it's most valuable player, Pete Alonso. A couple of players go out there and win the batting title and some stuff for the Cincinnati Reds. And just go see what happens over there at third base as it looks like Witt Jr. is runner-up to Eugenio Suarez for the gold glove at third base. So sub, oh, someone just hit Jose Ramirez in a show pack. And let's go. Let's get this going as we continue to go along. Clayton Kershaw retires after 20 years in the MLB. And now we are suddenly well into this franchise mode career simulation i'm loving it you know what with junior coming out there really doing the job this year and really coming out and getting the job done that's for sure garrett hampson goes from the um wherever he went to to wherever he is now with blue jays so that's an interesting note on it that's for sure and we will see if with junior signs anywhere other than here in Cincinnati where we find ourselves with him going to the World Series and he is now gonna get paid my friends how about this 26 million well 25 and a half million dollars per season sorry I read 26 with the Colorado Rockies so that is where we are headed next next three teams in seven seasons for him but now we find ourselves out in Colorado where we will begin this simulation with Bobby Witt Jr. and then we'll see what happens here for him in year number seven with the Colorado Rockies who I really don't want to see the roster I just wanted to be all a surprise as this season gets underway now and while well, the Rockies I think they just kind of sweeten the pot with 25 and a half million dollars to a very young stud an eight-year contract that's kind of crazy to see and I guess it remains to be seen what this becomes but I think Bobby Witt Jr. has found a stable home for the next middle part of his career, right? This is year seven, so that should take him through year 14, 15 of his career. And obviously it depends because you don't know what's going to happen when the kind of last year gets there, if he's going to stick around with the Rockies or not, or if he's even going to be able to make the full eight years in Colorado, right? That deal by the time year six, year five arrives, it's a cheap deal in franchise mode, and you could quite easily see him going somewhere else if this Colorado Rockies team continues to struggle as things go along. And right there, nothing happening on that trade, so don't need to be aware of it. As 35 and 56, so we're right back into the crap bin for Mr. Bobby Witt Jr., who obviously was probably an all-star last year, probably maybe got to the home run derby possibly but we'll just get all through that because I can't imagine there's too much all positive for Witt Jr. here in year number seven with the Colorado Rockies after signing that huge 25 and a half million dollar deal obviously would like to see more for a 97 year overall player at 26 27 years old but I guess they'll maybe try and sign him at 35 and see what happens. But this could be very well as well the deal that takes him into retirement too, depending on how MLB The Show 22 decides to simulate this career as we carry on into the 30-minute mark of this video. Again, thanks guys for being along. Really appreciate everybody listening to me natter on about Bobby Witt Jr., one of, if not the most exciting prospects coming up into the MLB this season, hopefully as we go here and well that is just what it is they uh, did not go out and do anything so we will see the nationals defeat the blue jays in 2028 and the lineups read as such as where is even bobby witt jr oh sorry i'm on the kansas city Royals. how many times am i going to make that mistake anybody counting back home let me know as witt jr is now in 98 overall contacts all the way up to 95 against left-handed Pitching and the power, well, boy, it went right out the window. It went right completely out the window for Bobby Witt Jr., who had that stellar season last year with 37 home runs, only 13 home runs, a 266 batting average, only 75 RBIs, and really not a season at all to write home about. The numbers slip again drastically year over year, 
and then you kind of see this as well the stolen base percentage there the fielding percentage goes down the war down almost a solid three points still though 21.9 career war only one negative season for Bobby Witt Jr. so the guy continues to be a stellar player in the MLB that is for sure and now we'll just simulate through this situation here in the off season, we'll get rolling. It's just a couple of yeses and noes down the stretch. Get us home into next season. Year number eight for Bobby Witt Jr., who's looking to improve upon things with the Colorado Rockies as Louis Patino signs with the Rockies. So that could be a good sign of things. Freddie Peralta signs with the Rockies. So it looks like a team that went out and spent all their money last year on Witt Jr. is now kind of content to go out there and add to the roster and go get this job done a little bit better with a superstar unbelievable like Witt Jr. And now, well, there you go. Things have kind of carried into the spring, and we'll see what happens here in year number eight for Bobby Witt Jr. and the Colorado Rockies now. A fun fact, Yak City Gaming wants to do a kind of superstar take on a Colorado Rockies franchise mode way back in MLB 14. My goodness, talk about aging yourself. So let's go over to Colorado Rockies once again, who will... Give the following lineup as Witt Jr. will be in that three hole. He's, of course, right there. The lineup looks much, much improved year over year if you're the Colorado Rockies. I mean, yeah, obviously there'd be a little bit of room to be better than that. But we'll see what happens as we get into the simulation for year number, sorry, year number eight with Bobby Witt Jr. And let's go. Let's just roll in. And, well, that's pretty much the expected result we would have expected right out of the gate without looking at the lineup. A big-time losing record to start the month. And hopefully in the second month we can start turning that around a little bit, right? There's a lot of room for improvement yet. And the Rockies are still capable early on if you can get back to 500 before the end of the second month. But at this rate, it's kind of looking like a lost cause here as the Rockies are one of the early teams to hit 30 losses in a season. And you got to imagine now, day by day, this contract for Bobby Witt Jr. kind of weighs on a Colorado Rockies team that needs to do some developing rather than winning at this point going forward. Is Yeah, the offseason additions were huge, and now all of a sudden they're going to try and make me eat my words. But right, the offseason additions can only be as huge as you want. Results speak volumes, and so far... Not getting many here in year number two of Bobby Witt Jr. with the Colorado Rockies in career year number eight for the big time prospect in the MLB here in this MLB The Show franchise simulation, career simulation in MLB The Show 22 on Clem Hawks. Now through the All-Star game yet again and away we go. 42-43 wins for the Rockies at the trade deadline you got to imagine something's coming up here where at the trade deadline you might want to move them just to get them gone because I really don't see where this is a big time winning solution and instead it is going to be the Blue Jays again acquiring big talent of course winning or getting to the World Series last year so we'll see what happens in this one as the Rockies just continue to absolutely fall apart down the stretch win a couple games, lose a bunch of games, and really not bring on the big impacts. You see, they're losing a bunch here and just really not doing anything of substance. So that kind of sucks here in MLB The Show 22. And I don't know, is it just worth simulating the first 10 years of Bobby Witt Jr.'s career? I don't know, because I don't know how much more losing I can take here. This is this is getting ugly. Is This has just not been a solid anything for him so far going all the way the Reds then go on two years later to win the World Series if you didn't catch that notification and now we go over to the Rockies here and see what they will bring in this franchise mode as you see his stats kind of improve again a lot starting to falter at 28 years old 22 home runs 76 RBIs so ties that second best career mark in his career so far only 417 at bats was kind of injured at times this year 129 hits a 309 average so that's better that's better than it could be that's his career high average so that's not bad at all and a 944 OPS so that's again a career high average so not the worst 
technically, I guess you fan that over 157 games. That's going to be a stellar season for Bobby Witt Jr. And I just want to get over to the war where it's a 6.5. So now this guy is exactly what you would expect from the next Mike Trout so far early on in his career. However, just not able to develop fully now with an injury in his career. And of course, following with that, Mike Trout retires after 19 seasons in the MLB. 540 home runs, 1,400 and 79 RBIs in his career. So that's where we find ourselves simulating into year nine. And I think we'll just kind of chop this at year 10. I thought we were going to go for a career simulation and maybe we'll do this in two parts and seeing what uh, what happens in Bobby Witt Jr.'s career here in MLB The Show 22. And I'm just, yeah, that's exactly what I'm going to do just because I don't want this to go on for too, too much longer to no points. So let's get into year number nine and simulate through and then that should take us right into the 50 minute mark where we'll see what happens here as that's a player signing with the Rockies obviously a big enough signing to warrant a player on there so that's good look at me making some stubs while we're playing this video as well that's solid as well and we find ourselves in the spring training section of the season now let's go get some results here hopefully as the Colorado Rockies First off, we'll just get through spring with the Royals as per customary, and then we'll get over to the Rockies and see what they can do here with a new lineup, potentially. Let's see what they did. Well, what did they add? What did they add? Witt Jr.'s got a 98. Ooh, look at this Rockies lineup. My friends, we might be talking about a Rockies lineup that's about to do some damage. Witt Jr. looking solid. His power versus left is just nowhere to be found. His power realistically is nowhere to be found for a mic level Mike Trout level player, but still that fielding's phenomenal, the spirit's phenomenal, the contact's phenomenal. So now you got to just kind of wait and see what happens this year with a better lineup for him in Colorado. And going into, of course, year number nine of his career. So we'll do the back half next time out, see what happens. But this is looking good early on a nine and nine ten and ten record early on so for the Rockies potentially about to figure it out if you can get that pure dominant stretch like two seasons ago from Bobby Witt Jr. or was it three seasons ago I guess three seasons ago with the Reds where they went all the way to the World Series 26 and 20 okay so we're going to be a team that probably hits 30 wins before 30 losses indeed that does happen so now the Rockies just trying to keep their head above water as we go through June and win a bunch of games hopefully and get down the stretch they're winning by a lot of runs so that's good to see if this Rockies team can continue to score runs down the stretch we will uh, probably see a lot of nice stats for Bobby Witt Jr. at the end of the season here as he rolls through into the middle section of the season and as the Rockies did in that first season just started to tail off in early June or early July sorry and now the MLB all-star stuff comes up and we'll see if any trades happen here is this the middle of the road team I don't think you'd want to give up but now all of a sudden losing all those games could play a big factor in everything here going into the trade deadline win a couple of games all of a sudden and now that turns things around and the Rockies are once again right back in the running with 60 wins and a 56 loss season so far early August. Now trending through and back to 500, below 500 for the first time in a long time. It's just not going to be one of those years for the Colorado Rockies, I don't think, as we get into late, uh, late of the season, September, and right there you see, unless they go on some kind of wicked winning streak down the stretch, it's just going to be another crappy season for Bobby Witt Jr. Yes, the AAA and AA teams for the Royals go out there and win. And for the Rockies, a 78 and 84 end of the season. Nothing to write home about there. They just couldn't get it done. And that is it. The Pirates defeat the Twins in the 2029 World Series. And for Bobby Witt Jr., we go over here to the Rockies yet again and see what he was able to produce for them this season. How about that? 178 hits, so a career high in hits, 50 doubles, a career high there, almost tying a career high in triples, 25 home runs, not a bad season for a team that struggled, 92 RBIs, not bad at all, a good tie of the career high with base on balls, uh, 151 strikeouts, a 285 average of 508, so 881, it slips substantially, but it's still up there in that high 800s number 
and you kind of get over here as well. The fielding percentage still touching 990, and the war 7.3, almost his second, well, it is his second, just almost his best season in the MLB at 7.3 wins above average. So that's not bad. That's a pretty good season right there for Bobby Witt Jr. And exactly what you'd expect. Again, this is just kind of simulating exactly how the phrase the next Mike Trout would sim out. Can't make the playoffs. Team sucks all the way. Here comes Jordan Holloway, a relief pitcher, 88 overall at 34 years old, to rescue the day for the Colorado Rockies in our final season of this simulation. But we'll see if that really holds true here as we get into the 45-minute mark, and we should be pretty much almost done this franchise mode simulation for the first half, potentially, of Bobby Witt Jr.'s career. But it could be a career that quite easily just goes by the wayside and never goes anywhere, and that's kind of where we're looking early on. All right, Jesus Sanchez, 89 overall. Those signs with the Rockies, you like to see that. That's not a bad little get for the Rockies there, and maybe just now... We might have something cooking up for Bobby Witt Jr. in the pen ult well in the ultimate of season of the episode as we get into spring now and try to finish this off one last time where we'll go out there and run it again with the Rockies and see what the Rockies can bring to a regular season roster for the tenth season of Bobby Witt Jr. in the MLB as he's been up here the whole time and we'll see right now as we go over to the. Rockies, well, Bobby Witt goes down to a 97 overall, so now he's starting to regress at age 30, going into year number 10 of his career, and this roster looks pretty much loaded the way you'd like it to look going into this, right? You've got a couple of guys up at the top of the lineup, you've got a couple guys at the bottom of the lineup, and Danny Jansen as your catcher coming into this season, and that's again my mistake, my mistake. we got to go over and back to April and go over to the Colorado Rockies. You'd think a guy would do this enough times he'd get it figured out, but he hasn't. And now the Rockies going to do exactly what they did last time around. So I guess you could say, for Bobby Witt Jr., really never been in a big market, right? Colorado, Kansas City, Cincinnati, those are teams that really aren't, right? The Yankees, the Dodgers, the Red Sox, San Francisco, Right? Those aren't big market teams that he's been to. Texas even, I'd say possibly with our new stadium, or Toronto having the whole country behind him up there. Right, There's a whole bunch to be done, but he's just kind of played in those small market teams and never gotten the success. Maybe the payroll's not there within the back end of the game. I'm really not sure. But for, um, for Bobby Witt Jr. in year number 10, still going off the rails here in this career simulation because... One playoff appearance in 10 years for Bobby Witt Jr. And it looks like that may be the continuing trend here unless they can do something to change this around. But one of the best players available in franchise mode, right? You're seeing what all these guys' overalls are. And he is at 97 overall. One of, if not the best player left in franchise mode currently at the uh, 2031 all-star break and we currently sit 51 and 51 and that's the best they can do but I guess that's what happens when the overalls mightily helped I mean mightily helped by um, by fielding so that's another instance there right he's the next Mike Trout so his fielding is absolutely phenomenal however you see there it just kind of destroys the overall and kind of skews how things look on our end uh, one of the best players ever, but it's not a bad thing. To be a great player in the field is not at all a bad thing in your career. So for Bobby Witt Jr., he's going out there and kind of now starting to turn the tide for the Rockies and potentially go out there and try and get into the playoffs postseason in September. Is That's a four-game win streak right there to start the month, and now it's kind of win ball the games and you're in, and that's what they're going to try to do against the Arizona Diamondbacks quite a bit against the Angels, and 81 and 78, you're in full control of your own destiny. And that is not going to be enough for the Rockies to make their playoffs at 83 and 79. And how about the Blue Jays? My good old Blue Jays going out there and winning games all over the place in the World Series to win several World Series rings here in this simulation for Bobby Witt Jr.'s career. And right there, he's down to 95 overall. So he's already 
at the end of 10 years, trending down, 28 home runs, second best of his career, most RBIs in his career, most hits in his career, a 297 average, a 914 OPS, so again, second best in his career, and that war is going to be absolutely scary to see another 6.5 war season, so 42.2 on his career through 10 years. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Yak. This is Yak City Gaming on Clem Hawks. This has been part one of the Bobby Witt Jr. career simulation here on Clem Hawks. We'll get part two up to you tomorrow. I am up on out of here.